Okay, electric potential energy. First of all, when we have a conservative force, we can set up a potential energy, or we can calculate potential energy due to that conservative force. If you remember, with conservative forces, the mechanical energy is conserved, and that's where we get the name for it. It also means that going from one point to another, it's path independent in terms of the work that's required uh, to go from A to B. We get conservative forces from gravity. We have a conservative force in the electric force that we're looking at right here. Later on, we'll see that the magnetic force actually produces a conservative force. And finally, the elastic force. So in fact, all four of these forces will have a potential energy associated with them, which means that we can store mechanical energy based on these conservative forces. OK, let's look at the general equation for potential energy. Um, the change in potential energy is equal and opposite to the work done by the conservative field. Now, our original general equation for work is the integral of F dot dr. F is our force. Force is a vector, so it has direction and magnitude. dr is some infinitesimal displacement along a path. Okay, And then we integrate this. And this is important because we have a dot product right here, which we typically should think about in terms of cosine. Uh, the angle between the force and the infinitesimal path, we multiply it by the cosine, where we take the two magnitudes and multiply it by the cosine, we get the dot product. Okay, so again, work done by any conservative force, we're going to get uh, this from the, the general expression. We then say that the change in potential energy is equal and opposite to the work, and therefore the change in potential energy is going to be equal to negative integral f dot dr. Okay, so this can be a rather nasty integral in many situations. What we're going to try to take a look at are the simplest cases, and uh, cases where we can, you know, really, the integral becomes so simple, we, we go to uh, you know, basically just algebraic expressions. All right, so again, uh, work, when we do work on a particular particle, we're putting energy into it. If the field is putting energy into it, then the potential energy is going down. So again, work is equal and opposite to the change in potential energy. This is the work done by the field. This is the potential energy due to the field. So once again, electrostatic forces, they're conservative. We can define a potential energy associated with the uh, function of the force. And work done by uh, a conservative force, again, is equal and opposite to the change in potential energy. Let's look at this first and, and simplest case right here. We, we look at this because it, it's really um, dealing with an electric field that's constant. This electric field right here, it's all pointing in the same direction. It's pointing in the positive x direction. Okay? It has the same magnitude throughout space. All right? So it's basically a constant. And we know with an integral, when we have a constant, we can take the constant and put it in front of the integral sign. Okay? Um, if the electric field is constant, the electric field is the amount of force per unit charge, the force is also going to be constant. Okay, so easiest case, the easiest scenario we can talk about is where we have an electric field pointing in the x direction and our movement is also going to be in the x direction. That simplifies this integral to a simple f delta r. Okay, now going back to the previous chapter, we know that the electric force is equal to the charge of the object times the electric field. So F becomes QE, and now our expression is really quite simple. Here's the work done by the electric field. Okay? Going back, change in potential energy is opposite to the work. Okay? If the field is putting work energy into the charge, the potential energy must be going down. And thus, if we look at this right here, delta U becomes the change in potential energy, how much charge we have what the strength of the electric field is, and how far it goes. 
Remember when we said that work was equal to force times distance for the, the very simple specific case where the force and the distance were both in the same direction? We're pretty much getting the same thing here. The change of potential energy is equal to the force, which is QE, times the distance, delta R, is the displacement right there. So, um, really nice you know, case when we have our electric field, it's constant, the charge is moving the same direction as the electric field, they're moving opposed to the electric field. Uh, we get these nice uniform fields whenever we have a parallel plate. So, in many cases, the parallel plate capacitor problems are the simple ones that we're going to actually do the calculations for. And here we have a parallel plate, okay? Consider a positive charge, all right? We have a positive plate right here, we have a negative plate right here. Positive charges feel a force pushing them away from other positive charges and pulling them toward negative charges. So here we can almost think of this electric field as pointing in the direction that a positive charge is going to be pulled. It's almost like rolling something down a hill. You go from a higher altitude to a lower altitude, and as you do so, the gravitational field does work on the rolling object and makes it go faster and faster. It trades potential energy for kinetic energy. The same exact thing is happening here. We don't have a gravitational field doing work anymore. Instead, we have an electric field. So, a high potential, a high voltage plate okay, is going to be analogous to a higher altitude. The positive charge is going to accelerate, it's going to convert electric potential energy into kinetic energy as it passes to the negative plate. So once again, looking at the change in potential energy, we can see it's equal and opposite to the work done by the field. So as this charge moves, okay, the change of potential energy is equal to negative Q. Q is the charge of that positive charge moving from the positive plate to the negative plate. E is the strength of the electric field. Notice we have E subscript X. That just means that the electric field is pointing in the X direction. Times delta X. Delta X is the change in position. X final minus X initial is moving in the positive X direction. We've set this problem up nicely so that we're moving in the positive X direction. And you notice here, we have a negative sign, because what's happening is the potential energy is going down as a positive charge is accelerating. It's giving up potential energy and converting that into kinetic energy. Okay, let's look at an example right here. We have a proton, it's released at rest from a position of x equals negative 2 meters. Okay? So let's say x equals two negative 2 meters is here, so maybe the origin is closer to the center of this problem right here. Um, it's in a constant electric field. The electric field is 1.5 times 10 to the 3 nat newtons per coulomb. That's basically volts per meter. Pointing in the positive x direction. Calculate the change in potential energy when it reaches x equals 5 centimeters. Just go back to the previous expression. It's real simple right here. The change in potential energy is negative QE times delta X. So our delta X here is 5 minus negative 2. Okay, that's in centimeters. You've got to convert that to meters. Our charge is the elementary charge of a proton, and our electric field strength is given right there. Very straightforward to calculate that. Calculate the same for an electron fired in the same direction, and we say fired because actually the electron is not going to naturally want to move from positive to negative. It's going to be pulled toward the positive plate. So you've got to push the electron uh, toward the negative plate because it's being um, you know, repelled. So it's sort of like rolling something uphill. Uh, what is the change in the electron's potential energy if it reaches 12 centimeters. So it goes from negative 2 centimeters to 12 centimeters. In that particular case, going back to this equation right here, negative Q, the electron has a negative charge, so the two negatives cancel out, 1.6 times to the minus 19 coulombs. We have the electric field. It moves from negative 2 to 12, so that's a delta X of 14 
So in this case, we're increasing the potential energy, it's sort of like rolling uphill here. We're pushing the electron toward the negative plate. It's going to gain electric. It's going to gain electric potential energy. So the proton loses it. The electron gains it. Okay. And finally, if the direction of the electric field is reversed, we're going to take these field lines, point them in the other direction, and the electron is released from three centimeters by how much has its electric potential energy changed when it reaches seven centimeters. Okay? So basically what they're going to do is simply switch the polarity here. So now the negative plate is over here, the positive plate is here. We have the electron that's going to be pulled toward the positive plate. Our expectation is that the potential energy is going to go down. Okay? So looking at this, we go from three centimeters to seven centimeters as a delta x of four. And to our previous equation, uh, we have a negative sign here. The electron's charge is negative, but Ex is also negative. So a negative times a negative times a negative gives me a negative. Our delta U is going to be negative. Q is the charge of the electron. The electric field hasn't changed. Delta X is simply 7 minus 3, 4. So that gives you your delta U. Okay? So again, Try to imagine this as a, almost being analogous to gravity, going uphill or downhill. The proton is naturally want to go what is going to naturally want to go from a positive voltage to a negative voltage. Okay, it's going to naturally want to go down, not hill, but reduce the overall voltage. An electron with the opposite charge, okay, is going to want to go up in voltage. In both cases, the potential energy is being converted to another form of energy, usually kinetic energy. Okay? Here's a calculation for that first condition. The proton is moving in the positive x direction. Here's the calculation for the electron. Notice I now have a negative charge right here. The proton was positively charged. The electron is negatively charged. Okay? And then in the final case, we'll have negative, negative, and negative, negative, that should be negative, negative, um, sorry I omitted that extra negative sign, I'll, I'll correct that, but again the potential energy is negative in that case. Okay, so our parallel plate, beautiful system to analyze because it's so simple. The electric field is constant in magnitude, it's constant in direction, so all these ugly integrals basically go away. Okay? We convert the integrals to a nice, simple algebraic expression. That's not the case for the point charge. Okay? But it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Let's take a look at our general form for work once again. The general form for work says that we take the integral of f dr. Now again, we're going to leave out the dot product because we're going to say the force and the direction are going to be, uh, you know, pointing in the, the same the same way. We'll, you know, sort of simplify our system so it's it's one dimensional in the x direction. Okay, so if this is f, we know that the force between two point charges goes by Coulomb's law. The force is equal to k q1 times q2 divided by r squared. Okay, so we take Coulomb's law, K is a constant, Q1 just is the charge, it's a constant, it can come out, Q2 is a constant, it can come out. So we pull them to the left hand side of our integral. Um, we are integrating over dr, so one of our squared stays within the integral. If you've taken calculus, you know that this is a fairly easy integral to evaluate. In calculus, if we take the integral of 1 over r squared, okay, that becomes negative 1 over r. We have limits to this particular integral, so we will take those limits and apply them to this equation right here. And again, the work done is equal to Ke q1, q2, okay, times the uh, reciprocal of the, the, uh, the final distance minus the initial distance times 
negative, well, we take the negative there. So you actually can take uh, 1 over the initial distance minus 1 over the final distance. So that's what we get. You know, we sort of turn this around there. That's the, the work. And um, here, we're going to see what happens to the potential energy if I take a charge and I move it 5 centimeters to the right when they're initially 10 centimeters apart. So again, this is the equation for work. We can calculate how much work is done there. The field does 4.5 times 10 to the negative 7 joules as Q2 moves away. Okay? And basically, our change of potential energy is equal and opposite to the work that's being done. So when we're dealing with point charges, we're dealing with point charges, the potential energy goes by 1 over r rather than 1 over r squared. Okay? So the potential energy due to two point charges it looks very much like Coulomb's law. Uh, the main thing is that there's going to be a negative sign in front. Um, we're still going to have Ke, we're still going to have Q1, we're going to have Q2, but we're going to have 1 over r if we're defining the potential energy with respect to an infinite distance. If it's a finite distance, that's just our form right there for work. Change of potential energy is equal and opposite. Okay? So those are the two cases that we can really calculate easily for potential energy. We can calculate the case for a parallel plate capacitor, and we can calculate the, the, the condition when we have point charges. All right? And again, um, for the case where we, we take two charges and we want to see uh, what is the total potential energy. We did this with gravity. We actually calculated the absolute potential energy um, if we were taking two masses and, and putting them to infinity. Uh, how much potential energy would be converted into other mechanical energy if we just allowed these two positive charges to move away. Here we set the integral uh, to infinity. Okay. So we do that calculation right there. And any time uh, we take 1 over infinity, that's basically 0. Uh, so that just leaves behind our potential energy being equal to Ke Q1 uh, Q2 divided by R. So what this says is, this is how much energy these two positive charges have, how much potential energy these two positive charges have when they're next to one another. If they're just released and allowed to move to an infinite distance away, that potential energy can be turned into kinetic energy or to some other form. Okay?